everybody, this is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation and the glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. I'm just going to invite his presence and let the, us work out this technical difficulty because Jamarine has so much to unpack. We're going to declare it. It's going to work tonight. In Jesus name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to turn his volume up. All right. Can everybody hear me now? Is it perfect to have a couple people saying it's fixed now? I just want to, Hey Kenneth. Hey Marie. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I think we're ready to go now. Jermaine can hear me fine. So just type in, as you're logging in, if you can hear me good, and then we'll start unpacking. Hey mom, how are you? My mom's on here. Bless mom. I love my mom. She's amazing. Thank you, Lord. Perfect. A couple people just let me know and then we're ready to go. Tell me if you can hear me, mom, and I get to introduce Jermaine and I can hear you clearly now. All right, praise God. Sorry guys, we're uh, moving to a new platform. So I just want to release God's presence over you as you log in as I get ready to interview Jermaine, but I want to just find any distraction from your mind because I just feel a heavy weight in the spirit. Whoa, a heavy sense of his presence tonight. So I just want to give you a second to share with your friends. If you know somebody that needs a miracle or a breakthrough or a prophetic breakthrough tonight, we're just going to call out words of knowledge as the Holy Spirit leads. We're going to be prophesying as the Holy Spirit leads during the broadcast. Hey, Dolores, how are you? few more minutes to share. People are logging in. Share with your friends. I got a few words of knowledge that I've written down on a piece of paper that I, I believe the Lord wants to do some healing tonight, some deliverance tonight to share the broadcast. So Lord, I just release your presence and unity with your main right now. We just invite your glory. We just say, have your way, have your way. We just bind all distraction. Whoa. We break off confusion. We push back the darkness. We just break off confusion right now. All heaviness go. Every heaviness, we just release the joy of the Lord over the viewers right now. Yes, yes. Woo. Thank you, Lord. We just release your joy, your joy, <laughs> your joy. I just see the Lord touching people with yes. joy. Just let the Lord minister to you tonight as me and Jermaine just unpack what Holy Spirit wants to do. Just, just say, I surrender to your presence, Lord. Just let me feel your presence tonight. So, Lord, we just say, let the, let the unity, the spirit of unity just reside here. Hey, Flint, how are you? All right. Thank you. We got it straightened out now. All Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on, Jermaine. I just uh, can't wait to see what the Holy Spirit's going to reveal. And just want to take a minute to introduce you. You're, you and your wife, Rebecca, y'all are international speakers. You have a new book coming out, which we will be talking yes. about tonight. I'm so excited, activating the gift of prophecy that is very strategic in this time and season. So welcome to Glory Stories. Awesome. Glad. Thank you. Glad to be here. Amen. It's such a blessing. So we're just going to dive right in because I love picking people's brain on when was the first time that you felt the presence of God? Awesome. That's a great question. So I actually grew up a uh, Baptist. Um, so, you know, we, we, you know, it's all about the word, you know, and salvation, which is amazing and great, you know, so that's kind of what I, I, my fundamental background has been. And so in my about 16 years old, we started going to a non-denominational church, which that's, you know, for a Baptist, that, that, that's a huge shift, right? And so we started going to this uh, non-denominational church where they had uh, just uh, times of worship and, and prayer and things of that nature. And so, you know, the first couple of times I went, I was like, what is happening? Why are people holding their hands up in the air? You know, why are people crying? Like, what is this weirdness? You know, we sung from hymnals, you know? So that was so far out of my, my understanding at that point. So 
you know, we started going to this church week after week. And, you know, I, I was more observing, trying to figure out what was going on. And so all of a sudden, I just thought, you know what, let me try what these people are doing. Let me let me just lift my hand and I sing a song and see, you know, just see, see what they're experiencing, you know. And so immediately I did that. And boom, the presence of God just kind of mm-hmm. came on me. And all of a sudden, I looked, I was one of these people now. And now I'm weeping. And now I'm like, what is happening? I didn't even understand. <laughs> uh, you know, and so that was the first time really experiencing God's presence and feeling it. And I just remember, you know, our church was big into worship. So we would have extended times of worship. The presence of God would be really strong. And so, you know, through that experience, I started just re- experiencing the presence of God in a powerful way that was like, I couldn't explain it. I didn't, ha- I didn't even have the teaching or the understanding. I just knew the reality of what I was experiencing, you know, oh. feeling God's presence, feeling his love, feeling him just, just the, him being made real and manifesting. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is real. Something is really <laughs> happening, you know? And so week after week, I started to love worship. You know, I started to, I couldn't wait for church. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get to church. I got to get to worship. Mm-hmm. You know? So here I'm a 16 year old kid really starting to feel the presence of God during this time. You know, most, most 16 year old kids are trying to figure out what movie they're going to see or trying to, you know, and I'm like, I want the presence of God you know? and because, because it became so real to me and so tangible. And so that was like the first encounters. And I just remember God touching areas of my heart that, that were broken and God touching uh-huh. areas of my heart that, that I didn't even know weren't fully alive. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening? and I would just weep and just feel the presence of God you know and sometimes my mom would be like I don't really feel like going to church you know this week and I'm like no we're going to church I need to get I need to get there you're hungry and so that started for me Amen. the hunger and the desire to to yeah to to as much as of God there was to experience I wanted to experience all of it come on I love that because I don't know many 16 year olds we, we declare more and more 16 year olds will be like yeah. you and they'll just be hungry for the word and they'll be excited and drag their their parents into revelation on the glory so yeah. I know people describe the glory in many different ways so if you're on here and you start feeling God's presence you may weep you may cry some describe it like fire some describe it like just the just a heaviness, just like a good heaviness, like a blanket. So don't let it freak you out. Because as you're as we're talking, and as me and Jermaine are unlocking this, you may start feeling more and more of the presence. And if God starts ministering to you, even while we're interviewing, just allow Him to touch you. Yeah. Because we just say more glory, Lord, more glory. So after you got hungry for the Holy Ghost, and and you felt His presence, how did you cultivate it? Where did your life go from there? You know, some from that point on, I just, you know, just started getting all kinds of some worship CDs and stuff, you know, and just kind of oh, playing God. them personally because I was like, okay, if it happens in church, maybe I can, you know, I can receive this. And so I just started practicing my own place of worship uh, at home, you know, just started, you know, praying and worshiping. And, and through that, the Lord just started encountering me more and more and more um, through that. And, and because of that experience, uh, God just started speaking to me and I was like, wow, okay, I'm just hearing things, I'm feeling things, I'm sensing things from the Lord. Didn't really understand what it was or even what to do with it at, at that age. You know? And so I started having these, I would call them but now looking back, you know, there they, they were God, God nudges and God stirring things up. But I would have people come up at church and they're like, you know, you have a call on your life, right? And I was like, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that means, you know. <laughs> but people people just randomly coming up to me. And we had the, this one specific lady. She would always come. She would just give me this stare, right? She'd just stare at me and just be like, mm. Mm, and then walk away like week after week and i'm like what is going <laughs> on you know we all like, had those so strange yeah, amen. <laughs> right right and then so finally one day, one week she came and she said you know who you are don't you and i was like i'm pretty sure i do but i don't know what you're talking about you know she's like you're called to be a prophet and oh. i was like oh wow okay <laughs> you know like okay well, what, I'm <laughs> that's how you probably you know? didn't even know what it meant did you <laughs> I, had, I had no grid for what that even oh, meant. That's good. you know but it was it was just just the beginning of i'd say like god putting out breadcrumbs you know and starting that journey and starting to to let me know here's here's who you are this is what you're called to do this is what you're this is what i've mm-hmm. called you to do you know even without my understanding god was continually speaking 
and bringing that confirmation and bringing those things that eventually I would catch it and I would receive it like, oh, okay, now it's sinking in. Now this is what that actually means and understanding that. And so little by little, you know, I, I started seeking out prophetic people, started listening to prophetic messages, started seeking out prophets like, okay, what, what, are, what does that mean? What does that look like? You know? Oh, and so that, that's what kind of started my, my prophetic journey. And so I had a friend of mine who was like, you know, if you're feeling you're called to be a prophet you need to read this guy bishop bill hammond i was like i have no idea who that is what's that all about and so he they gave me bishop bill hammond's books and i started consuming them and i was like oh my gosh this guy is putting language to things i'm feeling right because i didn't i didn't have any any understanding and i was like wow he's speaking what I'm feeling, what I'm sensing, you know, I'm not crazy. I'm not, I'm not just weird. Right. And so he, he just started, it started to explain to me and understand who I am in the call and the call of to, you know, into the prophetic or what that meant. And it started to give that language and that place of, of validation, like, okay, this is what I'm really hearing and it's right. And here's someone else saying similar things, you know, that begin to confirm who I am and what God called me to do. I love that so much because I, what you're describing to me is the process that I've seen so many prophets go through. <laughs> so I'm, and I, I really think this is going to speak to a lot of people's heart because you had somebody call you out. And a lot of times people call you out when you don't even know what it is. You're like, what? Right. There's, there's prophets today. Yes, there's prophets right. today. <laughs> and then right. you cultivated the glory and then you, 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 were hungry so you sought out training right. um because yeah. I, I know there's a people on here I, i'm in contact with a lot of seers seer prophets recently mm -hmm. who are right where you're at and they're just learning how to see and they want to know where's a safe place to go where can they study mm -hmm. and i love how somebody handed you the bill hammond book and if you're a seer prophet i recommend james gull but you're you're mm -hmm. actually you were able to surrender that to the Lord and educate mm -hmm. yourself and start seeking him on the process. Do you want to dis describe what helped you the most in your prophetic process? So the first thing was just beginning to understand that this was who I was because so when that word came forth about being called to be a prophet, it stirred something inside of me that was, this is true. This is real. I just didn't, I just didn't comprehend it fully, you know? And so, so what really helped me for the, the biggest thing is, is realizing there were other prophetic people out there and, and beginning to, 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 to connect with them and, and to seek them. Right. And, and to, to help build that. And so through that process, God spoke to me and told me to go to uh, Christian national Bishop Bill Hammond's ministry. And, and he said, you know, this is where, this is where I'm going to equip you. This is where I'm going to train you to be who I've called you to be. And so when I got there, it was super weird because I wasn't <laughs> normally around prophetic people. So I was like, what, you know, they were, they, they, were, they were, they had the song of, <laughs> yes yeah they were they were singing songs about lion the lion of judah roaring and coming like this and i was like what are we talking about you know I'm, and so they were singing all these warfare songs and declarations and people just get up and, and prophesy and just I'm like what am i in you know what kind of weird thing is this you know but little by little being connected there it begins to unlock who i am and, and, oh, and who god made me be by connecting to a place of community but also the community giving me permission to become who God called me to be. I love that because community is so important, you know, and, and I just love to mm -hmm. prophets running with prophets, especially emerging prophets running with other emerging mm -hmm. prophets. It's a strengthening. It's like that iron sharpens yeah. iron and it's the co-laboring. It's the unity. It's an honor. So I'm so excited to hear about your new book that, that you're put out because just tell me, just tell me why this, this season, this time, this hour that God just really yeah. put that on your heart and just, Go wherever you want yeah. to go with it. Sure. So I'll just start. This is, this is where the, the initial desire came was. I was actually, uh, I travel sometimes with Bishop Bill Hammond as an armor bearer and, and serving in many capacities. And so I was on a trip with him and I was running the book table actually. And this girl came up and she was like, uh, which one of his books could I just read? And it gets me activated. And by the time I'm done reading, I can start to prophesy. 
And I just really looked at his books and thought, I was like, actually, none of his books do that. A lot of them, they, they teach, they give great prophetic foundation, great prophetic understanding and scriptural basis for things. But I was like, I couldn't really think of any book. And then so I started thinking outside of him. I started thinking through different prophetic people I know. And I was like, you know what? I actually can't think of a book. There are lots of books on the prophetic. There are lots of books that teach you understanding of the prophetic. There's a few activation books on the prophetic, but none combine the teaching with the activation where a new person just coming into the prophetic can read this book and 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 bring get the understanding but then also get the impartation and start to be able to do it you know and so i was like Mm -hmm. i just it it, it, that just kind of hit me and i was like okay i I cannot think of one and i've read a lot of prophetic Uh, material you know and then in that moment i really i had that strong desire like okay i need to write this book i need to write the book that that bridges because once you're in a prophetic community there's just lots of resources but for someone who who's out there who's not connected to a prophetic community immediately there's not a lot that that starts you off and can get you in, in connected and so that that's what the heart of this book is so that's what i felt that stirring that uh, i needed to write this book and so it was on my heart for for a little while and then approached me and they said hey how would you like to write a book on, on activating someone in prophecy. And I was like, yes, that's been on my heart. <laughs> that was and like, so my wife yes, and I, we, we co-wrote the book together. Exactly, right? So they came they came and approached us and, and, and said, would you do this? And it was already on my heart to do this. So mm-hmm. I feel like it was it was the right timing for that book to, to, to be created and produced because what I feel like God's doing in the earth right now, he's raising up prophetic people. He's raising up prophetic believers all over. And, you know, it's, it's the, he's building his army, right? God, God's uh-huh. building an army of, of those that are uh-huh. devoted to him, of those that he's going to use in this season to, to, to really accomplish his purpose. And so, you know, if his kingdom is expanding, which I believe that's the season we're in, he's building his kingdom, he's establishing his purpose in the earth. And uh-huh. if it's expanding, he needs, he needs citizens in that kingdom, you know, and how do you know you're part of the kingdom? You know, the way you know you're part of any kingdom is who, who do you obey, right? Because the, if, you, if you're in a kingdom, you obey the king of that kingdom. Come and on. so if you're in the kingdom of God, you're obeying God. And the only way to obey God from you, if you don't understand what he's asking of you, if you can't hear his voice, you can't really fulfill what he's called you to do. And so that's, I believe, every believer needs to be activated to hear God's voice so Come they on. can fulfill their purpose, so they can hear him for themselves, so they can... They, they can uh, know what he wants of them, know what he's requiring of them, and follow God in their life and, and walk that process out, whatever it looks like for any of the season, to really learn how to hear God's voice for themselves and be equipped in that gift. Hey, Amen. I have so many people on here. I'm just reading some of the comments to make yeah. sure I'm answering some questions. Um, hey, Tortilla, how are you? Hey, Donald, how are you? Hey, Jared. Somebody asked, what is the name of your book? So I'll let you say that and just the details about it. Sure. It's called Activating the Gift of Prophecy. Um, mm-hmm. It officially comes out next month in December, uh, December 17th, the official launch date. Um, but it, we, it is already for sale for pre-order and uh, it's on Amazon. It's on our website. Um, which, or you can go to activating the gift of prophecy.com. Um, you can actually get a free chapter, the first chapter. If you go there, you can actually download the first chapter and be able to start reading it. Um, just to, just to kind of begin to stir that inside of you. So some people that are on here and they have, let's just, I, I just really feel like I could go here with you in the spirit. There's some people on yeah. here and they've been, they've been prophesying for a while. So what do you, what do you do to keep your prophetic hunger and your prophetic fire? Because I can just feel their hunger on that question. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really to stay in that place of, of continually using your gift, you know, continually oh. letting the Lord, letting the Lord just stir you, you know, there's that parable uh, where it talks about, you know, God gave five talents to one, he gave three uh-huh. to one, and he gave one to one, you know, and uh-huh. so, it, but he called, he called a servant that didn't really use the talent, that buried it, wicked, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> God called him wicked for he not using it. what he gave him, you yeah. know, and so, and so, 
I believe whatever, if, if it's a prophetic gift or if it's a healing gift, any gift that God gives you, you know, there's a demand from God to use that gift and to, and to function it and to flow in it. And as you, as you stay in that place of continually using your gift and continually flowing your gift, your gift increases. It, it strengthens the, the, the passion in it grows. Everything, every part of it begins to grow. But the minute you stop using it and you're not you're not cultivating it, it begins to wither and, and back up again to, to, to press forward. You won't lose it, but there will be like, you lose almost kind of like the potency of it will diminish if you're not continually stirring it up and activating it. I love that. I love that. And that's actually something the Lord spoke to me that day. I was just talking to him and spending time in the secret place. And he was like, steward the anointing you have, and I will give you more. He was just, just yeah. encouraging me, all of us, if you're on here and you moved in the healing gift, or you move in miracles, or you move in the prophetic, or you move in deliverance, the Holy Spirit was just saying confirmation to what you were saying. Just use the anointing you have, because as you steward it and you're faithful, I, I just really think there's a process of being faithful for doing what God has called you to do. And you guys have been faithful and birthing this prophetic mandate that God has put on your heart and activating new people. And I'm so excited to see, um, even before we got on the broadcast, I, I move a lot. I, I flow from Nobby to Seer. If people don't understand that Nobby is flowing, it's just the outflowing of the spirit. And you might have a different language for it, Jermaine, but I also flow in the Seer. And what I've seen for you is you had all these shoes, like shoes, everywhere i'm like lord why does jermaine have all these shoes and i seen you putting these shoes on people and they became so accelerated as they were activated it was like wow. it took them farther than where they were gonna go because whoa because you released that word into wow. their life and it was so strategic it was powerful wow so wow that's, that's, that's awesome exciting. i love that amen. i just see that amen so i'm just yeah, making sure so I, I get some more questions while we're on some questions to see if i'm hitting any more um, about your book. So this is on pre-order. Yes. It's activating the prophecy, the gift of prophecy. Yes. It's on Amazon. Um, God shows pictures, not sure to do when God shows pictures. So that's more of the seer anointing Maria. So basically a lot of seers do not understand that that's how God speaks to them. Mm -hmm. Do you see too, Jermaine? Is that one of your? I, I do. It's, it's, it's not, I'm more now. It's not my primary, but I do see. So um, Jermaine can explain, he might explain it a different way, but I just say a lot of seers that I've ran into, Jermaine, they don't know that God's speaking to them through pictures, but that actual picture is an is a invitation from the Holy Spirit to ask Holy Spirit, what is this picture about? So it's God yeah. speaking to you, inviting you to have a relationship with him. Um, Cause people see random stuff, right? Jermaine, like yeah, yeah. I birthed a webinar out of seeing the picture of the webinar. I mean, that's all God mm. showed me. I didn't need at that point to ask him. I knew that's what he was asking me to mm -hmm. do. But mm -hmm. other times it may take a dialogue of like the shoes. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an example. All I saw were a bunch of shoes around Jermaine, but I had to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what do I do with this word for Jermaine? And God will unlock that for you, especially like Jermaine was saying as your faith. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, me, let me speak into that just yeah, a little. And so, so like, like you said, like once you saw that picture, you asked the Lord, you know, what does that mean? And so, you know, many, many times we, we can press into revelation and oh. revelation births more revelation, you know? Oh. And so when, when you, when you receive that revelation and you can continue to press and ask the Lord questions about, okay, what does that mean? And then, then more revelation begins to flow. And so one of the activations that we love to do is, especially with pictures is now we begin to take the elements of that picture. So the Lord, so the Lord's speaking to you, right? So he showed oh. you that picture, right? So if he showed me a picture of shoes, it might might mean something totally different to me because the, he speaks my language so so yeah. as soon as he you know he's you he saw that vision he started to communicate to you in a way you can receive it and so mm -hmm. for example so now you saw those shoes so now we, we can begin to how we can press it into more relations like where are these people going where are these shoes taking them and, mm -hmm. and 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 more revelation begins to build when we when we continue to press that and so for example i'll, t I'll take your vision because and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll speak out of that, what, what I feel the Lord even saying to that same vision. 
and for me, I, I receive that. And, and, and what you said, I think, is, is was excellent. But now I'm going to press into more revelation out of that. Okay, Lord, why? Oh, so, so tell me, just describe the vision once again to me. That I had of your shoes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just seen all different shoes, shapes, and sizes from all, all different walks. Like, like they were not just tennis shoes. They were not just boots. They were not just sneakers. It was a combination of a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different shoes. And at first they were coming to you. And as they were coming to you next, I seen you putting them on people's feet. And that's when I saw the fire of the Holy Spirit, just that activation. And even as, as pressing in, you know, I, I just saw that people are, are you preparing them for the nations? You're going to call out the mm -hmm. sent one. Whoa. So that's just, mm -hmm. I, I just, that's yeah, yeah. Amen. That's good. So one thing I'm seeing out of that is also you're describing there's different types of shoes, you know? And so what I feel like is, yeah. Some, I, I, I'm seeing different types of shoes. So I feel like some are going into governmental areas. Some are going into, into media. Some are going into these different avenues. And each shoe represents the different, the different areas they are called to. And I feel like th there's going to be a real a fresh specific anointing to equip people for that Amen. specific thing they're called to do. Amen. And there's going to be a grace for them to, to step into that. And I just see how the shoes are, are fit perfectly for someone. Tying laces, you know, it, it's fit perfectly for their feet. It, it's crafted perfectly for them to run into what they're called to do and to come into that place. But also, it's a, it's, it's shoes are protection, right? It protects your feet. It covers you, you know. So there, there's a covering that comes to that. There's a protection of where you're going, you know, how, how you're being sent. And so, so this is just an example of showing people how you can press more into whatever God shows you. There's, there's depths and there's layers of revelation and even just one specific word that God begins to speak. And so sometimes I feel like people might feel like, man, I'm not getting this deep, long. Come on. As, as this other person is getting, you know, if, if you yeah. God one word if god gives you one little image there's uh -huh. so much depth in it when you when you begin to and ask the lord to reveal more and more and it, it, it builds that and it, it works more that more revelation so i think especially when people are starting out they might feel like they get one simple thing and if you uh -huh. take that one simple thing and you treasure it and you say okay lord thank you for this thing you've shown me give me more and as you steward that little place is saying man all god showed me was a little thing and, and you don't almost value it as much the revelation is not and expand and grow and so i think that amen that's the key for people to begin to understand whatever god shows you it's valuable you know and and, and begin to use that to cause that cause cause their revelation amen can everybody hear clearly I see some questions come in. I just want to make sure the sound broadcast is good and we'll just keep going and we might just pause and, and prophesy for a few people. Um, I see some questions. My husband flow is totally different as me. It's cool how God purposely makes us different. That's one of the things that too, yeah. Jermaine, if I can go there, I love how James Gall said, I'm just doing his prophet book. It's so good. But I love how he said every prophet's different. Like every evangelist is different. Every pastor is different. And we really should have an expectation of I can honor the grace on your life. I can honor these people's on here, their grace on their life. They were all wired to be a maximum capacity in the fullness of the spirit in different realms and different spheres. And I just I just love that. Sometimes Jermaine's Wi-Fi is going in and out. A few people said, OK, I just want to make sure it's clear before we, we start prophesying. Somebody didn't want to miss the prophetic word. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I might get a little disappointed with that. So it's like, okay. are we good to go now? Just let me know. And I'll just stop and release the presence really quick as if you're joining this. Lord, we just release your presence right now. We just thank you for your yes. glory. Whoa. We just thank you for your glory. And I'll just let them, let everybody, let me know if you can hear us good now. I will uh, just step into the healing anointing. I just seen a leg brace on the right leg um, mm -hmm. before we got on this broadcast. So if you're on here live, just let me know. I just seen it around the knee. And I just mm -hmm. seen like a pulled tendon, tendon and a weakness on the knee. So just let me know if everybody can hear good because we're getting ready to do some prophetic stuff. Um, 
Whoa. So Lord, we just command healing to that knee right now in the name yes. of Jesus, all tendons, all ligaments. I just curse that trauma off right now and off the cellular memory right now. Yeah. I just command that patellar. I just see like the patellar, like weakness around the patellar. We just command creative order right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Anything, Jermaine, you want to release till I get before I yeah. get for you? Yeah, I just, uh, okay. yeah. I just saw uh, someone's back, and I feel like where there's this that are pressing and compressed it against each other, I just saw the Lord pull them and stretch them out. So we just release that healing right now to whoever needs it right now. Whoever, if you have any back compression issues with this touch rubbing against this, we just be healing over it right now in yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just waiting to see if the Lord has anything to unpack. Are you good with just names, Jermaine? Does that work for you? Yeah, yeah. Right. Awesome. So, all right, we may release some more words of knowledge, but I'm just going to start taking names and just let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. So let's start with Tortilla. I'll let you go uh, first, Jermaine, and just honor you, and then I'll release if the Lord gives me something, and we'll just do whatever Holy Spirit wants. So the first name is Tortilla. Okay. And Tortilla, what I, what I just see for you right now, I just see the Lord is, is, is unpacking some things in your heart. I feel like where some things that happened even about 15 to 20 years ago, some, some traumas that took place and things that caused almost your heart to, to come to a place of uh, being uh, almost to protect itself. It kind of enclosed, but I just see the Lord opening your heart again and bringing a healing and restoring some hope and restoring even some vision of the future. I feel like what happened uh, was really a, an attack of the enemy to rob you of vision for your future. And it almost kind of put you in a place of paralyzing. And I just see the Lord restoring to oh. you hope. I just see the Lord restoring into your heart, even just right now, just that future that he's called you to. I feel like there's a real strong anointing on your life, uh, really for administration and, and leadership positions. And I feel like when the enemy tried to rob that that, that gifting and that, that gift grace that God had on you, God is restoring that even now. There's a healing that God's restoring even to your heart right now. Do some traumas that happen that God is. God is, is, is bringing you to a completion season of bringing full mm -hmm. healing so that you can step back into the assignment that he has mm -hmm. for you. Amen. I love that. I'm just taking a note of what I heard. So I just heard like uh, Jermaine said for you, Tortilla, I said, I, I heard full circle that God's bringing some things to completion. And I see like the Lord crying grace to the mountains. And I see that deep gift of intercession that the Lord, even now as we speak, the Lord is closing any generational doors that would affect your seer anointing Whoa, right now in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you, Lord, that I just see such an acceleration that you're going to have in that intercession time of seeing so i don't know if you currently see or if god has opened up your eyes with a new grace to see at a higher level but i almost see like that watchman on the wall anointing to just break down barriers I actually see you kicking down walls so i see that like overcoming anointing that you're going to stand in the gap for other people so that's so awesome exciting all right let me pick another name all right kenneth i see him going woohoo me 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 kenneth i love kenneth all right we'll go from there <laughs> Amen. and kenneth i just feel like there's there's a, a real building anointing that god's put on your life it's mm -hmm. it's twofold number one it's building people i feel like it, god's really giving you a heart for people and a heart of an encourager really to speak into people and really speak into their destiny and the potential that god's put inside of them but i also see there's a, a, a grace for you to to build um structures and systems that that facilitate the presence of god i just see where god god anointing you and, and really calling you in this season to 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 step out and to build some things that he's getting ready to show you i just feel like there's there's some blueprints that god is getting ready to release to your heart to to build and establish some things that's going to be some structures that's some, that he's going to fill with his presence and i just feel like this is this is a time where he's really almost kind of cutting you free also from from some legalistic things that the enemy tried to teach you and put in your spiritual roots that god is setting you free from and cutting that cutting you free from that to bring you to a place of really thinking outside the box and flowing with his spirit in a way that that is going to be very different than anything you've seen but but as you're obedient to what he's saying you're going to build something that's going to be god's really going to use in this season 
I love that. I love that. There's so many people on here that want a prophetic word. I promise we'll do it for a little bit. (laughs) They're hungry tonight. So Kenneth, what I've seen for you is just like what Jermaine was saying. I just see you letting go of all disappointment. You weren't stuck Mm -hmm. in the mud. You felt like you were in slow-mo and you're getting ready to build. And it wasn't that you were stuck in the mud. It was God just pruning you because Mm -hmm. you have such a sensitive heart and a sensitive spirit. And I could see that. So you're very sensitive to people's wounds. So I just see that inner healing anointing being cultivated in you. So I just uh, call that forth in Jesus name. And he was just healing stuff like what Jermaine was talking about so that you could step out and build in this season. So I just bless your, your hands and your eyes to see and your spiritual senses right now to, yeah. to build in this season in Jesus name. Yeah. So we have Flint. Flint helps that I can use a prophetic word. <laughs> <laughs> and Flint, I just hear the Lord saying that this is a, a, a fresh season in your life where he's closing the doors of the past and he's oh. locking them. <laughs> there's, there's no going backward. It's only going forward into what he has for you and I just see him opening a brand new door uh, a, a door of opportunity but it's a fresh door of also <laughs> hope to you God is restoring your hope but he's also preparing some things inside of you there's some hidden abilities you're not even aware of that God is getting ready to, to bring to the surface and highlight to you in this season that you're going to be like oh my gosh I've always been I've always wanted to I just didn't know, but I feel like God's really going to click you into a place where you're going to function in your highest potential, your highest gift mm-hmm. set, and all, also your, your highest opportunities. God's really opening that fresh new door for you in this season. Amen. Uh, I love that. I love that because I know him, but Flint, I, um, whoa, I just feel the glory for a second. I'm just going to release it as we tap into this. I just want to honor his presence. It's just building. So I just release the glory of everybody watching. We're going to keep going to just wash. I just see the Lord. We're going to keep prophesying, but I just got to honor the Holy Spirit. I just see the Lord breaking off rejection right now. Whoa. Mm, There's a lot of prophetic people on here right now. So I just break any generational curse of rejection off you. I come yeah. forward to that iniquity right now. Command it off. Just come out of agreement with rejection right now. I just see hearts being healed right now. Whoa. Any inferiority. I just cut any roots of any inferiority that that you'll be secure to flow as a prophet or apostle, whatever God's put on your heart, your assignment. I release security over you. Just come out of agreement. Mm -hmm. Command all. Wow. Right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You got anything on that or you want me to go back to Flint, Jermaine? Um, no, I, yeah, I feel like the rejection thing that you just mentioned, I, I, I feel like, what I see is actually the kind of Lord kind of grabbing the rejection that's been rooted in people and uprooting that Amen. and just really setting people free. But also what's happening is he's pouring in his divine acceptance, you know, in uh-huh. its place. So w- where the roots were, his divine acceptance is filling those and, and, and restoring those areas. Amen. All right, Flint. I will go back to you. Flint, I just see where God is going to give you a new language. So I just declare that 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 door of your generational line that had any language barriers to be closed right now in the name of Jesus. Now I see the Lord unlocking new ways that you communicate and it, it's going to put you in a, in a different set of a set of people. And you're going to look around and you'll say, man, all these new people. And it's just people that, that you're called to uh, kind of disciple and encourage. And it, it's been a language that you have been meant like a, a, a special sound. Wow. I just see a special sound that you let off in the spirit that's very unusual, but it's your sphere of influence. So I just call in those people that you're supposed to disciple in Jesus name. Yeah. All right. We have so many more. You want to keep going, Jermaine? How do yeah, you feel? Yeah. All right. Good. All right. I got uh, Donna Reynolds. Donna. Donna, I, Donna, I, I hear the Lord really saying he's getting ready to restore some relationship things. I feel like where the enemy tried to, to sow some seeds of discord and some division, God is coming in to restore those relational uh, areas for, because he has a purpose in the relationship. And the enemy really tried to, to derail some things to stop that purpose from coming forth. But I feel like you're in a season where God is getting ready to restore some relational things. And also, some, I feel like there were some words that were spoken that really left an imprint on your heart that, 
that almost brought a lot of fear and a lot of doubt mm -hmm. that God is breaking that off even now. Amen. And he's beginning to just restore uh, just to, just a wholeness to your heart for you to, for you to be open, to be able to reconnect to, to, to in those relational areas that God's restoring. Amen. That's so excited for you, Donna. That's a good word. And Donna, I just see this is a time of, of, of relation. I just see, you know, what the enemy meant for evil. God's turning it around for your good. And you had to press really deep into the secret place during this time for what the what you've been going through. But I see like the expansion coming to your territory in the spirit. So just get ready for that. But, but God has been preparing you in that deep place where you felt pressed on every side just to be in sync with his spirit. So the revelation that you've been birthing is not wasted. So that's so exciting for you. I just bless you with that in Jesus name. All right. I got Ella. <laughs> Ella. E -L -A. Okay. Ella, I just feel like it's a new season of elevation for you. It's a season to to ascend and and to go higher than than you you've been at. I just I I'm, I just see Lord kind of picking you up and putting you on on His wings and just taking you higher. Okay. And I just feel like it's it's, it's there's a, a letting go of the past. And there's a releasing of things that have tied you down and weights that have you often taken you to. But I also feel like it's, it's also some new opportunities that God is bringing forth that might challenge you like before. I'm a little bit uncomfortable, but I feel like it, it, it's God inviting you into some into a whole new thing with him so that you can soar with him in this new place. Oh, wow. That's powerful. So Ella, what I see for you, it's so beautiful. I see you carry an anointing for encounters. So I just break off any time that you felt misunderstood. And I just thank you, Lord, that she is way understood by you. And that's the most important thing. And that she will actually be able to disciple the people that felt misunderstood because of the realm of encounters that they have. So I call in the people that Ella is supposed to influence. And we just I just want to affirm you in your encounter gift and say, write them down, write them down. I can even see a scribe anointing of you writing stuff about your encounter. So I just call that book forth that it's going to be able to reach people and disciple people, even the, in the places that were painful for you because God was cultivating that encounter realm. But now that you were faithful in it, whoa, that you're going to be able to, to help people through that process. That's so powerful. All right. We got Lisa. Lisa, I just hear there's there's a creative anointing that God's given you that he's get, he, it's really a season to step into that creative anointing. I feel like there's some things that you might have been almost felt insecure or intimidated by to step out in the past, but I feel like there's, there's God's really releasing a grace on you now to step into those things and that creative anointing that he's given you. I feel like you're going to create some things that's going to almost kind of give people uh, permission to 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 connect with the Lord in just a new way, and I just feel like just begin to step out. I don't. I, I'm not quite sure exactly the fullness of that creativity, but I just feel like there's a whole creative river that that God's stirring inside of you. And I just really really feel the Lord saying, follow follow what He's doing, follow follow how He's leading you in this creative flow, and it's going to create uh, create and birth something new for you. Wow, that's awesome! Woo Thank you, Jesus. All right, Lisa, what I see on you is the healing anointing. I actually seen your hand getting hot. So I don't know if you're stepping out and you're praying for the sick or if you're stirring that up. So just either way, just type it in there. And Lord, if, if she's not activated in healing, I just impart it right now in the name of Jesus. You yeah. may feel heat in your hand. We just, me and Jermaine, just activate it together. Yeah. We just say, yeah. go out, heal the sick. Heal the yes. sick, heal the sick. I just see a strong compassion that you would be able to use your healing gift in the marketplace. Wow. Yeah. I just seen marketplace. So just step out, do it in the marketplace. That's so exciting. Thank you, Lord. All right. I have a lot of people on here that want some <laughs> words, but I, I'll go back. We'll go back to prophesy in a few minutes because I just felt led to ask you by the Holy Spirit. Um in your process of getting to know the glory and getting to the stirred up and, and writing this prophetic book about um, activating prophecy, how did you steward the words that he was giving you? Somebody on here needs a real, I could just feel it in the spirit, needs a real practical way of how 
you started prophesying like daily, like how did you use it? You know, cause not everybody has a Facebook platform and sure. not everybody understands the fact to prophesy to your waitress. So just give some practical steps and then they can get your book. <laughs> they want more. Information. Sure, sure, sure. You know, so here's one practical thing that you can do. And one thing I started to do when I, when I, when I first was really pressing in and, and, and really trying to hear from God is I would there there'd be things I'm going to and I'd, I'd pray about it I was like okay, okay Lord this is what's going on and, and I would pour everything I was feeling and wanting answers for and then I would just say okay Lord now I want to hear what you have to say about it you know and so I used to go on these walks <laughs> I used to go with like this cornfield near, near the near college and I used, to, I used to walk through the cornfield after, and I would pray and then I would say okay Lord I need you to speak to me about these things and so whatever I started to get whatever whatever thought came to me whatever I just I just took it by faith okay this is God and wow. so I just said, okay, that's the first thing I felt. Then this is God because I just asked him to. So I believe he just answered me. And so I, whatever, it was, the first thing I felt, I just started saying, this is God speaking to me. And so then I would write it down. And uh-huh. as I would start writing, like journaling and writing it, more would come. And, and the, like I just said, like I said earlier, revelation bills, right? And so I would just start to write what I felt and more would come. And I'd have like three or four pages full, full of full of answers from the Lord about what I just prayed and what I just, what just, what I just poured out. And so that's, that's a practical thing that you can do is, is start to journal, you know, ask the Lord to speak to you and start to write down what you're feeling and what you're, what you're sensing. And as you do that more, you're, 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 all, you're letting yourself be confident and, and that you can hear God. I think one of the biggest lies the enemy tries to speak to us, all of us sometimes is, is bringing in that doubt, right? And saying, well, was that really God? Did God really speak to you? And, and, and cause doubt to try to come in. And so, you know, we know the parable about, about the seeds are, are sown and the birds from the earth come, you know, and, and try to take, grab the seeds before they take root. And so one of the things the enemy tries to do is, is try to rob, rob the word of the Lord from us and, and, and bring that doubt. And so, and so when we when we practically begin to practice hearing God's voice, we build our faith, and and we we the doubt lessens. You know, the the, the 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 what the enemy can can really bring that fear and doubt. It lessens every time we let ourselves grow. I mean, it's just like any other natural skill or even spiritual skill. The more you practice it, the more you do it. Your confidence and your ability in that skill increases and grows. And so, and so that when we when we when we make it a, a discipline to say I can hear from God and continually practice that discipline in our lives, we 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 cause that gift to be strengthened and to grow. I can just hear in the spirit because I hear this all the time. And I'm sure that you hear this question all the time because this is one of your strategic activations. What do you say to the people that say, I can't hear God. I can't hear God. I'm trying to hear him. I'm sure you hear this question all the time. So I'm going to let you address how you would address people on here. Sure. The first first thing is you are hearing God. Okay. Amen. <laughs> that, that, that is that is that is the first bottom line thing. Amen. Regardless, sometimes we we put God in a box, you know, and 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 even the phrase "hearing God" puts us in a box a little bit because what, what, when you say hear, <laughs> "hearing God," oftentimes people might think I need to audibly hear something. Right, yeah. and they might think I, I need to hear. I need to hear something. So they're looking to hear yep. God audibly, or they're looking to hear God in a specific way, and so they might be missing the actual way He's speaking. You know, and so for example, like we're talking about the sea, or we're talking about seeing seeing pictures. So He could be showing you a picture, like, but I can't hear God while He's showing you a picture, right? <laughs> because you're looking for a specific way for God to communicate. But Come when on. you understand the different ways He communicates, and you're open to it, and you're saying, "Okay, Lord, I, right now I'm going to hear from you." What if it's a picture or if you just feel or sense something so i talk about four different ways that god speaks speaks to us you know he speaks to us through seeing you know and we can we call it this year he speaks mm-hmm. through us through through to actually hearing hearing in your spirit or even hearing audibly that does happen also mm-hmm. we talk about sensing just just that that what you some people would call it a gut feeling but when you just feel it strongly and, and the sense nowhere. it James Gall calls the it knower, the knower. Right. Yes, <laughs> the knower, right? And and then and then there's just just the the awareness of something that all of a sudden it's it's it, it's a fact. You're like, oh my gosh, I I just know this. I don't know how I know, you know. And so when we understand the ways that God speaks, we can now begin to pay attention. So when someone's like, I don't know, I can't hear from God. I'm not hearing from God. You are. It's Amen. just to to take the time ta- to take the time to recognize and. 
and to, to really train yourself to pay attention to to to, to how he's communicating and in in he's he's I, I rather use the word communicate because when you hear when yeah. you hear speakers here it puts us in a box sometimes it so does. it's the way God communicates. You know, he, he can speak any way he wants to. And he speaks a language that we can receive it, that we can understand it. And so that's why I encourage people to take, spend time in worship, spend time reading the word, because it's in those times that you'll begin to learn yourself and learn how God communicates to you. Amen. Is, is, is in those times. And so that's you know so especially during times of worship during times like that begin to pay attention to what you're spiritually becoming aware of and observe those are the ways that god begins to communicate and speak to you i love that that you call it communication because sometimes when when you're used to uh communicating god with one way he will switch it up just to get you to to invite you it's like an invitation to go deeper so i like communication Mm -hmm. better than hearing i agree with jermaine that's such a good term because a lot of people are only listening from the audible voice but number one is god speaking to you through dreams it's all throughout the bible god can be speaking to you through a dream he could be unlocking stuff and so you are hearing in a dream number two like jermaine said it's the sight it's the seeing anointing you see pictures in your the eyes of your heart the eyes of your heart like i love how james gall teach you it's like your imagination you're seeing yeah. with with what you were shut down as a kid but now the lord the spirit realm is just one thought away so you have to really see you might be seeing with the eyes of your heart and seeing pictures and god's trying to communicate to you that way and then there's you know there's smell you have a sense of smell in the spirit you could smell something in the spirit that you know is not around you in the natural and god's asking you to to speak to you in that way there's so many i mean we could we could go in so many yeah. different directions there's same spiritual senses that god can speak to you in any way shape or form but everybody like jermaine said is in the audible i want to hear the audible but maybe Maybe God's yeah. speaking five other directions for you, but you're exactly. focused on the audible. And one of the things you could do, like Jermaine said, is positioning yourself in worship. Sometimes it's that glory realm because the glory and presence of God comes in worship and it allows you to like do that Samuel posture. I love where Samuel, you know, he just sat and laid and laid and laid in the presence of God. And sometimes it's just quieting your mind. Like God's been speaking to you the whole time, but you're not listening. So one of the things I like to do and like soaking contemplative prayer is, you know, asked him. Lord, what are you saying to me in this season? What season am I in? Like with what Jermaine is talking about. What what am, what is my assignment for this week? And it's learning to take step by step. And what would you say to the people that um, have you had any process of like cleansing spiritual senses, like gates, eye gates, ear gates? Is there an activation that you do with that? Um, I have not specifically been too much with that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm aware of that. And, you know, at our church, we do have a lot of, we, we have deliverance teams and stuff like that. So, you know, when, when we see people struggling in that area, we do recommend them go to the deliverance teams, you know, to, yeah. you know, yeah. if some of, some people have witchcraft in their background or any kind of occult thing like that, you know, that has any kind of extra open doors, you know, so that's kind of how we really deal with that in our Amen. local assembly, you know, to close those doors. That's perfect. That's exactly where I was going to go with that. So if you're on here and you feel like, you know, you're really struggling to hear God in any of your senses, you know, just reach out, see where there's a deliverance minister in your area. Um, I do some deliverance on Zoom. There is a wait list because the need is so high. So um, but just that's one of the things that could really unlock God's voice to you. If if some of the other ways that we've talked about is not making sense. Yes, yeah, staying in the word, absolutely. When you unlock the word, you unlock the truth. It, it opened up mm-hmm. God's ears. I know that um th- there's just uh <laughs> it's so cool. I just see the weight in the spirit of the the level of discipleship anointing that you have in the prophetic. It's just so amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I just God really unlocks pictures. So I just I just see it um growing and accelerating in this mm-hmm. season. It's so awesome. I have a bunch of people that said me, 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 and I, I will probably do a few more. I, I don't want to keep you around here all night, but I, I'm thankful for, for him sharing because I know Maria, Maria, and I think that's how you pronounce it. She really wants a word. <laughs> okay. okay. And Maria, what I, what I see is I see the Lord is, I just see kind of this picture of the Lord is releasing healing on you 
and release and healing through you in this season. I just feel like, uh, Maria, this is a, a, a fresh season of you receiving your own personal healing, but also releasing healing in, in, in a new way. And that, mm-hmm. I, I don't even know physically, I just feel like there's some things that God is touching in, in, in your body right now, Maria. I just feel like even chemical things, God, God is kind of hitting a, a, a refresh button and the reset button just to cause a healing. I feel like there's uh, where there's been tiredness. And I feel like around two or three o'clock in the afternoon, there's this tiredness that hits you that God is resetting. It's also going to cause you to become an agent of healing and releasing. Amen. 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 And there's, there's such a glory. I just see the glory washing over you right now, giving you strength, but washing away the past seasons. But I just see that, like Jermaine was talking about, that fatigue is just washing off. I see it just washing off your heart, your mind, and all the weariness from past season. And Lord, I thank you she's entering a season of fruitfulness for the labor that she has put in. And I just seen that scribe anointing on you, Maria. I see books coming out of your hands. So if you don't currently write, there's amazing writing classes. Um, Jennifer Vez just did one. I know Jennifer LeClaire's done one. There's a whole bunch of different people that have done writing classes. So just if you haven't stewarded that, um, that's an area you could be looking in. Because I could, I just seen multiple, multiple books. So it wasn't one. It wasn't two. It was more like five. So just press into that. God makes you hungry for that. Thank you, Lord. All right, so let's see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Any other words of knowledge or deliverance words that Jermaine that you had before the broadcast? I just want to make sure I honor you and any anything else you yeah. want, please. Yeah, I just I just feel like whether it's now or even later, someone watching, but I, I just feel like that there's there's someone specific that you feel like you 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 feel like there's potential inside of you and you feel like you're you're almost kind of uh handicapped and paralyzed like you don't know how to get it out you don't know how to release it and i just feel like the lord is breaking off uh, broken over you to to hinder your potential and hinder what god's put inside of you from really coming out i just see a freedom coming to, to you over this next season amen amen so breaking out of the box breaking out and he says and um, I want to take a, a few minutes here that if you're on here and we haven't called out a word of knowledge, um, just if you need healing in your body, I just don't want anybody to go off sick when we're getting ready to get out the broadcast soon. And just just type it in the bar if you haven't if we haven't called it out. I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. And me and Jermaine is just going to whoa pray over you really quick, even if it's a creative miracle, whatever it is, there's no time and distance in the spirit, the glory can touch you where you are. And even if you don't want to share it, just receive Jermaine. I'll just, let's just release the, uh, the healing anointing right now and the glory. We'll just release the glory right now. Release the glory. I just call out thyroids right now. I just command the thyroid to be healed in creative order. I command the TSHs to be normal in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoa. Yeah. Right now, yeah. I see the Lord breaking off anxiety in the glory right now. Whoa. Yes. You, we'll just flow just back. See, yeah. Long, long standing pain, pain issues uh-huh. that you've been dealing with for years and years. I just see pain leaving right now. Every spirit of torment be broken now in Jesus' name. Uh-huh. You just see that all, all pain, all discomfort that has no explanation to leave now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we just speak to, um, I see just like skin issues, sinuses, and eyes. So that just sounds to me like an allergic reaction, Lord. So we just break any rejection off the bloodline right now in the name of Jesus. We just break it off. We just release acceptance. We command all autoimmune off in the name of Jesus right now. We just command creative order. Right now, somebody wants prayer for pancreatic and lung cancer. So we'll just come together in unity, Jermaine, and I'll release and you release. So, Lord, we just command that spirit of death off right now in the name of Jesus. We just break every assignment of hell against your pancreas and your lungs. We just command creative order right now. We declare you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. 
Go for it, Jeff. Yes. And Lord, we just command cancer to leave the body now in Jesus' name. We just release your healing presence right now to touch their bodies and to release full healing and full restoration right now in Jesus' name. So people are saying they feel that, they feel the anointing. So yeah, just we're, we're just releasing the glory. So if you're on here and there's and you're are you watching the replay or you're are you're listening to the podcast later on, we're just releasing the presence. Receive whatever you need in the glory. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is everything you need, whether it's a create a miracle to your eyes, you need 2020 vision, whether it's infirmity, whether it's some type of affliction, whether it's a healing for your knee, just just receive it. And and Barbara, you said there's blood in your urine, but pain, but no infection. So we just command creative order to your kidney right now. Whoa, we break every assignment of hell against your, your yeah. kidney right now. And we command that that the filtering system to be cleansed out by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we command creative order to that right now, right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm making sure there's no more before we get ready to get off of here. I want to make sure I honor your time, Jermaine. And I'm so excited to, to connect with you and, yeah. and, and see what God, what God does in you guys' life. Because I know you're, you're also itinerant, right, international? Yeah, mm -hmm. so we do. You. Yeah, we travel all over. So uh, are you um, anywhere people can send you invitation for invites? Do they go to your website? Yeah, you can go to our website. It's Jermaine and the word and spelled out and Rebecca.com. Um, so yeah, you can find out more. Amen. Yeah. And I'll be posting that after the broadcast so you can connect with Jermaine. Any other places that um, people can connect with you? I know they can order your book, Activating the Prophetic, on your website and on Amazon. And um, yeah. you do a lot of stuff on, they can follow you on Instagram, correct? And Yeah, yeah. follow me on Instagram. It's King Jermaine on Instagram. I, I share usually quotes every day. It's something encouraging. I just kind of put out there what I feel. Um, so, yeah, so follow me on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Donna, if there's any urinary tract infections under the sound of her voice, we just command all infection to go. We just rebuke that yeah. spirit right now, and we just command creative order. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can just feel that fire. Just let the fire. We just release the healing anointing and unity. If you need healing, just receive it. We don't have to call it out. We can, but you can just receive it right where you're at. I just feel such a healing fire. Whoa. So we just command creative order to backs, to spines, to knees, to thyroids right now. Right now, chemical balance to, to brains right now. We just command the chemical balance back to creative order. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Kenneth, you can follow him on Facebook. I'm going to share yeah. stuff after the broadcast. You can follow him after this. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to get ready to get off of here because I want to honor Jermaine's time and and uh let him enjoy i know you're on the road to let you enjoy that yeah. time yeah uh thanks have a good thanksgiving okay everybody well thanks for for being on the broadcast jermaine i'm, I'm so yes uh, thank you for the thankful. opportunity yeah yeah it was so awesome to have you on here so we'll just see and, t and stay in touch and see what god does and uh yeah they fill the fire we just keep releasing it over on board yeah. We just bless you as we log off of here. Lord, I just ask that you just let the glory come over them. Even as they, they after you turn this broadcast off with me and Jermaine. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jermaine, would you mind doing impartation before I uh, log off? He's your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Father, right now, we just declare over every person watching right now just a fresh touch from you right now in jesus name lord i just break off everything that's hindered them from receiving your presence or feeling your presence before to go now in jesus name and we just declare a fresh and feeling and a fresh uh, touch of your presence right now father in jesus name. yes and i just this is the whole reason that that i make glory stories to to help you realize you are a glory carrier you can get in god's presence so get off the broadcast Go get in the glory. Receive your, if you didn't get a word on here, God's got a word for you. Don't let it hinder you in any way. Go before his presence and go enjoy him. 
So we just bless you guys. And, and thank you, Jermaine, for coming on. Yes, thank you. Blessings. Bless you, David. And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get along with God and ask Him to help you cultivate His presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of.